Hey, what's up guys, Mitch HD here. It's been a couple of weeks, but I'm back with another review, this time of the Iceland Air 757-200 in the Heckler Aurora livery by Gemini Jets and 1 to 200 scale. Now, I did order this uh, the um, when it was first um, announced, and uh, there was a mix-up in my order, if you remember the JetBlue E190 review when I mentioned in that one. Uh, there had been a mix-up, and uh, they did eventually get one for me. And it has, it arrived in sort of December, it did take a while, um, uh, but it's been a long time since I've received it. Anyway, uh, please check the description in case you missed anything throughout this video. My Facebook, Twitter and Instagram links will be down there. I pre-ordered this from easytoys.com. This is my 8th 757 model and it's my first Iceland Air model. Some information about Iceland Air. Their operation space is out of Keflavik, uh, Sorry, Reykjavik Airport in Reykjavik, Iceland. Main hub is Reykjavik Keflavik International Airport. They were founded on the 3rd of June 1937 and their fleet as of the 5th of January 2017 consists of 32 aircraft, 28 are 757s, 27 of which are 757-200s and one is a 757-300. They serve 43 destinations and their current 757 routes are from Reykjavik Keflavik to Amsterdam Schiphol, Birmingham, Boston Logan, Brussels, Chicago O'Hare, Copenhagen, Denver, Edmonton, Frankfurt, Glasgow, Hamburg, Helsinki Vanta, London Gatwick, London Heathrow, Manchester, Minneapolis, Munich, Newark JFK, Newark Liberty, Orlando, Oslo, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Paris Orly, Portland, uh, Seattle Tacoma, Stockholm, Toronto Pearson and Washington Dulles. This aircraft's first flight was on the 8th of April 1994 and it was delivered to Iceland Air in May of 2005. The bone customer code for this aircraft is 8 as it was, um, uh, sorry, the customer code for Iceland Air is 08. The code for this aircraft is 56 because the original owner was Iberia. Alright, so let's take a look around the box. Gemini 200 logo, Iceland Air, a picture of the aircraft, Boeing 757 200, 1 to 200 scale. On the back of the box, uh, the standard writing that we always see, licenses down there. On the top, the right hand side, the bottom. On the left. Now, um, as being uh, become quite common, that we see the flaps on the likes of the 787s and the 757s from uh, Gemini. And uh, focus it here. And if you wish uh, to read that, you can just pause the video. I hope there's no. Move it around a bit so you can get the um, light out the way. All right, so I think that's good enough. And then you see the aircraft. Right there. So now I'll just open it up. And there is the model. Alright guys, the model is now out of the box and we will start at the cockpit windows on the port side. Okay, so, sorry about this. Cockpit windows, window wipers, pitot tube static ports. Then we have the aircraft name, Heckler Aurora. Now, uh, from 2005 until December 2014, the aircraft was named Heckler, which is the name of, of one of Iceland's most active and most well-known volcanoes. When this aircraft was repainted in the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights livery, in 2014, sorry, December 2014, the name became uh, Hecla Aurora. The name corresponds to one of the more popular sites in Iceland where you can catch the Aurora Borealis over Mount Hecla. And then we have part of the registration on the gear door, FIU, and it's got E tops, it's missing the S. But oh well. And uh, this one thing I don't like about some of the 757s is that 
uh, there's a problem with um, the, there's no magnet in the nose gear and it's just it's just a bit of um, foam and um, you cannot get it to sit how it should properly sit actually there's a the issue about the magnet I'll, I'll get to a bit later as well but um, it should sit more like that should tilt a, back, a bit backwards but um, this doesn't want to it wants to sit way back there because it has no magnet um, so that is always the most annoying thing I find right now we see that beautiful livery you can see the mountain range um, it's not Mount Hecla just yet uh, we then have Iceland air titles uh, we have some by the second cabin door we have some uh, logos I don't know what they are uh, hashtag my stopover got the um, the inboard landing light and we then have uh, you can see the Rolls-Royce logo on the engines because these are Rolls-Royce RB211-535E4 engines Just be a bit uh, careful here because that nose gear is going to fall out Right, the engines I expect them to spin. Oh, maybe not. Okay. There's a better view of that inboard landing light. And let's see if we have any landing lights on the nose gear. No. Okay, that's fine. Right, and does the second one spin? No. Okay, well worth a shot. Um, I expect them to spin though, considering the size of the model. 737s possibly, um, maybe even A320s. I would expect them not to spin when compared to this uh, aircraft, but you know, sometimes you don't always get that. And uh, we come to the winglet, We've got the Iceland Air logo on the winglet and the red navigation light. Now let's backtrack a bit so you can <clears throat> see the uh, tyre livery. And just behind the wing here, and sort of on the wing a bit, uh, that is Mount Hecla. Registration number is TFFIU or Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot India Uniform. <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, Iceland Air, sorry, Iceland flag, because Iceland Air is uh, the flag carrier of Iceland. And on the tail, we have the Iceland Air logo and uh, their name as well. The APU exhaust looks uh, quite nice. And then we got it's fallen out. Right now on to the cockpit windows on the port side. Sorry, the starboard side. That front gear is really annoying me, and I'm sure it's annoying you too. Um, and also, for those that have this model or any 757s, you would know about this issue. Um, cockpit windows, window wipers, Peter tube static ports, Heckler Aurora, name of the aircraft again, uh, Iceland Air titles, front cargo container, if you can't see it, I'll just point it out. So it's grey lines. And that beautiful livery. Hashtag my stopover. Board landing light. If you can just see that. And Rolls Royce logo on these RB211 engines. And then the uh, winglet with the Iceland Air logo. And the 
also the green navigation light. Back onto the fuselage, you'll notice there's a the aircraft is on quite a uh, a lean. That is just because of the nose gear. Uh, rear cargo container door, registration number, Iceland flag, and the logo on the tail. Right, so now we'll take a look underneath the aircraft. I'm not going to worry about the nose gear while I'm lifting it up. Actually, you can see right in there, it's perfect, that there is no magnet. And um, really what they could do, while well, I've actually got this here, what they could do, is you see where they got the foam, they could just extend the plastic, the grey plastic piece, all the way up and stick a magnet there. How about that, Gemini Jets? Not that difficult, I would expect. Anyway, let's uh, take a look underneath the aircraft. So we've got some antenna antennas and um, uh, anti-collision light markings. I don't think, no, it's not real. Uh, I thought there was a plastic jewel. Um, antenna, Gemini Jets logo. And there we have the anti-collision light. Hole for the stand, not the stand I prefer, but I'll get to that later. Underneath the wing, flaps, slats, ailerons. Underneath the engine. Registration number on the side. Antenna. And APU housing. Top of the aircraft. We have uh, some antenna markings, anti-collision light, uh, another antenna, and there's the ADF antenna, O-wing emergency exits, flaps, slats, ailerons, and spoilers, and also the nose step markings, Icelandia logo on the inside of the winglet, with also the uh, hashtag my stopover. Continuing down, we have the Wi-Fi box, and it would also be for the SATCOM, and you can see um, the leading edge, two faint grey dots on each horizontal stabilizer. They are the logo lights that light up the tail at night time. Alright. Sorry, just getting this nose gear back in. All right, so I'll go through the seating of this aircraft now. Uh, we have a Saga, which I'm guessing is just like premium economy. Um, 22 recliner seats, rows 1 to 6, so that's from here to, uh, to about here. Uh, and then we have, oh sorry, so from here to here, I should say. Then we have um, economy comfort, 41 seats, rows 7 to 14, so that's from here to here. Oh sorry. Um, yeah, be here to here, and then also from here to uh, here, yeah. And then economy 120 seats, rows 15 to 34. So that's from here to the back of the aircraft, and that is a total of 183 seats. Now let's get to some of the features of this model. Um, landing gear doesn't roll quite. Um, good at all. Uh, disappointing considering how 
how awesome this aircraft looks. <coughs> Sorry guys, bit of a bit of a tickle in my throat. Uh, but our um, nose gear doesn't really, no, nah, it doesn't swivel at all really. Um, there is tilting, which is really the only good thing with the gears. If there are any set of gears that need to be improved the most, uh, from my experience, um, the 757, definitely, because uh, there are so many issues with it right now. Um, apart from the nose gear, the main issue is the rolling of the gears, because the main gears are pretty close together, But so if they can figure out a way not to let the gears touch and not um they're also they also tighten up like their um maybe glue is um holding them together sometimes i've noticed that and it's just you know it, it's annoying i don't really i don't roll them around really anyway so it doesn't bother me but the fact is that's what you pay for anyway we'll get to the um the stand so not the stand i prefer the very small stand, Gemini Jet Slug on the bottom, blue film, just remove that. I'll remove the rest of it later, I think, yeah. Anyway, yeah, as I said, it's not the one I prefer because it's got the, just a circular uh, piece that fits inside the aircraft. I prefer the one that's circular at the bottom and then at the top it is a semicircle and it's a lot thicker, a lot longer and, and it's, um, it, it holds the aircraft in place and it, um, you know, you know it's going to hold. So whenever these stands come with a model, I never actually keep the aircraft on the stand. I just do it for viewing purposes. I'm not going to bother with that nose gear wheel to put it back in to show you guys. Um, as you all know, they're obviously retractable. Uh, well, magnetic. The main gears are magnetic. Uh, as you can see there, there we go, it's back in now. And then when you do want it in the in-flight position on the stand, which I have no choice if I'm putting it on the stand, but it won't be anyway. There are gear doors here to use. Alright, um, so this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed Please leave a like if you did, comment, tell me what you think of this model, tell me if you're going to get it, subscribe for more, and share this video as well so other people know about it and see if they want to get it as well, but at this point in time you probably won't have much luck, because um, they did a re-release, and I'm pretty sure that's virtually gone, so um, got a very, very, very slim chance. But nonetheless, it's a fantastic model. And if you can get your hands on one, if you haven't already, um, you know, you do really want it, get it. Trust me. You um, won't get many opportunities. And although there are those gear problems and you get the, the stand, you know, the really bad stand, it's still a fantastic model on its own and it's a must for any collector. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.